So here it is, my electrical discharge machining machine. It's not completely finished yet, but it's at the stage where I can use it and work on improving it. I wanted a nice clear screen that could display plenty of information. So I chose a 3.5 inch LCD. I also wanted a control panel with lots of buttons. I made these buttons with my homemade injection molder. And engrave them on my CNC machine. Not all of the buttons are in use yet. But I had plenty. I gave the machine three axes. Z, of course. Y and A. I know this is an unusual combination, but I've never really been one for convention. I could change the A axis to an X and add another stage on top of the Y. Or I could just do this. At the bottom of the machine is a tank of distilled water with an aquarium pump inside. This allows a constant stream of water to flush the work area. The water exits through an overflow pipe and goes back into the tank via a filter. I'm using simple paper filters for now, but they get clogged and need changing often. Inside the tank are also two baffles to separate any material that gets through the filter. The basic circuit that generates the spark is the same. All I've changed is the spark capacitor, which is now a flash capacitor from a camera. All of the fancy stuff is handled by a few microcontrollers. The stepper motors are driven by these small DRV8825 drivers. They have enough power, but seem quite susceptible to electrical noise, which is not good for an EDM machine. So I may have to upgrade them to something better. Eventually, all the machine functions will be controlled automatically by a simple version of G-code. For now, I can set the parameters manually. But does it work?
Here's the hole produced. And the electrode after burning it. This is a graphical display showing what's going on. The yellow trace is the arc current. The red line is the adjustable current limit. When the current is below the limit, the electrode is fed down. When the current is above the limit, the electrode pauses If a short circuit occurs, the electrode is raised. But how am I measuring the current? The obvious way is to put a small resistor here. Measure the voltage at this point and derive the current through Ohm's law. But there are several reasons why this is a bad idea. The current pulses are very short duration and hard to measure this way. Any extra resistance in this path will steal power from the spark. I also want to be able to feed this voltage into an analog pin on a microcontroller. During a short circuit, this voltage could exceed the maximum the microcontroller can stand. Too high a voltage across this resistor could also stop the transistor from turning on fully and it could overheat. A better way is to use a potential divider and read the voltage here. What this is actually measuring is the voltage across the spark capacitor, which is inversely proportional to the electrode current. I've sized the resistors so that at 60 volts and no spark current flowing, the voltage red is around 5 volts. As the current increases, this voltage drops. If a short circuit occurs, the voltage red drops to zero. This method also provides more of an average value by integrating the electrode current over a short time as the capacitor recharges through the resistor. Okay, what about a steel workpiece? Note the branched orange sparks. This is characteristic of steel burning. That's actually the carbon in the steel. The water is very black. I'm not sure why. It should be through by now. Something's not right. It's barely scratched the surface, and half the electrode has gone. I think the black colour was the copper burning out of the brass and forming copper oxide. Let's try reversing the polarity. I've also reprogrammed it to lift the electrode every so often to help flush out the particles. It just made it through with what's left of the electrode. The exit hole is much smaller, but the hole on the top side is nice and crisp and square. Time to make some actual parts. I want 14 of these made from 100 micron thick stainless steel. That's about the same thickness as a sheet of paper. The hole is one millimeter diameter 
and less than half a millimeter from the edge. This stuff is very hard to machine conventionally because it is so thin. First I need to machine the electrode from a block of brass. I've left these two tabs to keep the part attached. The electrode has some wear, but not enough to affect the parts, which all came out perfectly. <laughs> 